So Debian's installed. Let's now move on to installing MergerFS. This is uh, not uh, a long process, but there's a few key benefits of MergerFS over using traditional RAID uh, and many other um, drive pooling solutions. Uh, this this one for me at home is the best. I tried um, MHDDFS, AUFS, uh, loads of them. Uh, there's a list in, even in here somewhere in the original. There you go. Um, I tr yeah, yeah. Look, just look at this. <laughs> look at this list of things I tried over the years before finally setting on settling on um, merger FS uh, and. Since I wrote this article 18 months ago, I haven't even considered switching away. It's just, it just works. It, <laughs> I, even, I even said that. Okay. I uh, I was put onto it by a chap called Zach Reed, who um, I haven't looked at any, any of his stuff for a little while, to be honest. Maybe I should. Uh, it's a very good website. So if uh, you like this sort of stuff, go check out his site. Um, okay. Let's go back to installing MergerFS. And um, as of Debian 9, the uh, MergerFS package is now in the main repositories. So congratulations to the developer on that one. Um, there's a couple of options you've got for installing it. The first one is from the, the main repositories, which will allow you to just do apt update and upgrade. If you're new to all this, that's the route I'd probably go. If you really want the most up-to-date stuff you can go and download it from github directly but let's let's get started so first of all let's do an apt install merger fs to be fair this is a new system so i should probably have done apt update first just to make sure uh which i didn't anyway install merger fs anyway and we can um we can check that with apt installed list, I think. Ah, it's apt list, and then we can pipe it to grep and search for MergerFS, and there we go. We have MergerFS 2.18 installed. Okay, so that's the first step done. Um, Next thing we want to do is actually create what's called a mount point to allow the operating system to mount a partition on your drives. This is quite straightforward to do. Um, so let's make some directories. I like to group everything under the mount uh, directory and then create disk. Um, so I'll, sh I'll show you what this command does. So we do mount disk. Uh, so in this system, hypothetical system we have five disks we want to mount so if I do make the that one didn't finish the file path correctly let's do this so if I do this and now go to MNT we can see that it's created uh, five directories which is uh, exactly what we wanted and I'm going to do the same thing with um, parity so I'm going to create I only want one parity so I'll just do this. You could, if you want to have multiple, which SnapRaid supports, do the same thing as we did for the data disks. Uh, let's do this. And then finally, we need to create somewhere that MergerFS can call home and pool all of your multiple drives on top of. So that is mount storage. Now that's done. The next thing we want to do is grab the disk IDs. Now, uh, this virtual machine doesn't actually have any drive so I'm going to go to my real life server and show you what this looks like so let's go to um, dev disk and, and under here there's a bunch of different options you've got so some people prefer UIDs some people prefer other things me I prefer this one because when I do this uh, let's do it this way actually I get a nice long list that didn't work very well try again um, I get a nice long list of all the drives with real-world names that I can actually understand as opposed to if we looked at the uh, UUIDs I mean pff, fine 
probably useful to someone, it's not useful to me. So I always prefer to use the IDs instead of UUIDs. Now, um, you need to ensure that your drives have partitions on them. And you can see that there are two, this, this one for example, there are two um, lines here. So you've got SDB, which is the actual device, and SDB1. Um, so uh, partition one, this one is what we actually want to mount. This is where the data actually lives. So this, this one here tells the operating system the actual drive, and this one tells the operating system the partition on the drive. Now, if you haven't created a partition on your on your disks yet, you can do so with gdisk. And if we do um, dev disk by ID, uh, and let's just take this one, for example, I don't have gdisk installed. Let's install that. I do have gdisk installed, but I need to be root to run it. That's what it needed to be. Okay, so uh, let's just do some basic stuff with gdisk. Let's print the existing partition table. Fine, okay, we have one partition, which is 2.7 terabytes in size, and um, it's of the type code 8300 type Linux file system. And um, what we might wanna do here is print out the help options. So GDisk works in a number of ways. You, you, can, you modify the partition table on your drive with various commands. So the first one on a brand new disk that you want, or even if you're recycling an old disk and you just want to wipe it completely, this is what you do. You type O and this is, it, it tells you what it's going to do. Yes, it's going to create a new partition table. And if we print out the partition table now, it's empty. So let's create a new partition. Um, so let's look for here, new partition is N. Okay, let's do this. And it asks me a bunch of questions. So partition number one, yeah, that's fine. First sector is at the beginning. Well, actually it's lined up with this sector on the drive. And the last one is lined up with this sector, which is right at the end of the disk. This is fine. You can, at the end here, specify exact sizes for your partition. So if you want 100 gigabytes, you can do that. If you leave it blank, it will just fill up all available space. Under here, let's uh, type capital L to show you all of the different codes. There's a lot of stuff here you're never ever going to use. There is some stuff you might use, like Linux Home. I mean, some of this stuff is optional. I, I think I've only ever used Linux file system and then there's another code for LVM stuff somewhere. And those are the two that I've personally used in the past. Um, so there are more codes even. Yeah, e EFI system, that's the, that's the one I've used actually, not LVM. Um, this is for UF UEFI BIOS and stuff like that. So I'm gonna leave this as the default 8300 because that's just a standard Linux file system partition. Hit enter and we're done except for one thing. And I'm not actually gonna do this because this is a live disk and I don't want to trash my data. But we, we can, um, we, we, it's a non-destructive tool up until this point only when you type W and press enter does the um, gdisk application actually write the partition changes so I'm not going to do this I'm just going to quit the application and just to prove to you that nothing actually happened I'm going to print the partition table again for the same drive and we're there so that's how you create partitions on a disk I'm going to get um, I'm going to get rid of this window I think over here and go back to this guy over here. Um, right, so that is the uh, process of creating a partition. Now we need to tell the operating system which partition on which hard drive we want to map to which mount point on the operating system. There is one more thing. I need to show you, which I'll bring the uh, live server window back for. I'll try not to overwrite any data, but we'll see. So before we had this this window. So um, again, if you want to get the partitions, let's do 
Uh, neat little tip, by the way. You know when you've got a whole bunch of stuff on the screen, like this, and it's filling up your, your page. Control L, clears everything. Changed my life. Anyway, nice little tip. Um, so let's look under, or another nice thing as well, Control R is reverse search. So I know in the back of my head that I was looking for a command that had by hyphen ID in it. Now if I press Control R again, it's gonna cycle back through the various commands. And this is the one I actually wanted. So reverse search saves me probably hours a week that those two commands alone, Control L and Control R. Um, so there you go some command line tips in here for you as well. Uh, now, let's look at the partition one, that's this guy here. What was I gonna do? Yes, I was gonna create a file system. We've created a um, partition, but next we need to actually create the file system that sits on that partition. Now, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can do mkfs ext4 and then dev disk by id and then put in the partition and off you go. Um, you could also do makefs, um, xfs and the, and the same thing, dev blah, 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 blah. Um, you might find that uh, you don't have the correct tools required to use F xfs. So in, in this scenario, this is where you would actually use um, apt to install something called xfs progs and um, this downloads it from the repos and installs it. And this allows an empty Debian system to actually interact with XFS drives. EXT4 or XFS, it really doesn't matter which you use. I just picked some at random depending on what mood I was in that day. Um, it really doesn't make a difference as long as you stick with either of these two. There are some others you could pick, but you're on your own with those. Uh, so, what have we done? We've created a partition on the drive. We've created some mount points. So we've created partition, we've created some mount points, and we've put a file system on those partitions. So it would make sense now, I think, to go and take a quick look at the uh, FS tab file. That's this guy here. Um, so what we wanna do is find which drive goes to which mount point and uses which file system. I can't fill this in for you. You need to know your own details. Remember it's ls dev disk by hyphen id and that gives you all the information that you need. Um, the only thing to bear in mind with SnapRage, which we'll come on to in a bit, is that the parity drive must be as big or bigger than your largest data disk. So if we take a look at my, my system here, we can see that the parity drive here is a six terabyte drive, and that is the same size as my largest data disk. And this has actually allowed me to retire this guy who was about five or six years old, very, very full. I moved all of this onto disk one and it still had loads of space to spare. How technology moves. Anyway, um, yes, that's the, that's the important thing to look out for is that the FS tab here is complete. So um, once you've finished, oh yes, another important thing, big letters here. Do not modify this section of the file. So anything above where your data where your data drives and your merger FS stuff is configured, don't touch this or your system won't boot. Uh, so the last thing to do is to actually configure merger FS and um, I was, it's actually kind of cool how, um, I don't remember where I got this tip from, I think it was Zach Reed actually. So by using the same name for all of the disks, all the data disks, so mount disk one, two, three, four, um, I'm actually able to simplify this this line of the FS tab considerably with a wildcard entry here. So I highly recommend you do it this way. So again, we've got the, the, the drive and not partition, but the device that we want to mount, which in this case happens to be a bunch of directories, which themselves are a bunch of drives. This is the target, so slash mount slash storage, and this is the file system, and then there's a bunch of extra configuration options here. Uh, all this one does, FS name, when I type um, df minus h, when it appears in this list, 
I get uh, a nice user-friendly name, MergerFS, which is show 17 terabytes. Um, MergerFS here, rather than some massive long string like these guys. Up to you, optional, but I'd recommend it. Um, the other thing to look out for is this direct I.O. option here. I found this improved my performance um, 18 months ago. I haven't looked at it since then. And again, it's up to you whether you include it or not. Do some tests with and without it. It um, might improve your performance. All right, so once that's all done, the last thing to do is run a command called mount hyphen A. And what that will do is it will mount the drives in the FS tab file as described here and then finally the last thing to do is df minus h and you'll get a list of what's mounted in your operating system okay we're now here in the article and um, again this just covers some common problems there's a lot we've just covered and I'm aware that's quite a long segment but it's very important to get it right otherwise you can easily overwrite data and nobody wants that so uh, this is a quick summary of what we've done. Um, we created the mount points for the data, the parity drives, and then finally the merger FS pool mount point. We created and or found the partitions that we wanted to mount, and then we added that information into the etc FS tab file, and finally mounted the drives. And uh, it's probably time to install Docker, but I'm going to get a drink back in a minute.